Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, if Martin Luther King was alive today and he was working in healthcare, he would have probably said something like this. After 69 years of freedom, we still don't have the right to health. 69 years later, the lives of 30 million people each year are still sadly crippled by the manacles of misdiagnosis. 69 years later, 100 million people every year are pushed onto a lonely island of poverty because of catastrophic costs associated with illness. 69 years later, the sick, the old, and the disabled are still languished in the corners of our society. And so we are here today to dramatize this shameful condition. Healthcare in India is broken, it is inaccessible, it is unaffordable, and most of the decisions around healthcare are still largely subjective. Technology is fast changing the way health is delivered, but there is no magic bullet. To truly solve this problem, we need to wed business innovation with technological development. In order to understand how to fix healthcare, we need to first understand why the Indian healthcare market is so broken in the first place. India, like most developing economies, is a self-pay market where majority of the services are paid for by the individual or the patient themselves. Since individuals, compared to bulk buyers like insurance or government, have much less negotiating power, and there exists a much higher level of information asymmetry, these markets are rife with corruption and inefficiencies. How many of you, by the show of hands, have gone to a doctor's clinic recently? How many of you have noticed products like pens, notebooks, calendars, stethoscopes, etc., which have brand names of pharmaceutical drugs or pharmaceutical companies on them? A lot of you. Most doctors take kickbacks in either cash or kind to market all other healthcare related services, be it other doctors, hospitals, pharmaceutical drugs, or diagnostic centers. These kickbacks are significant in value and they not only add to the overall cost of the treatment, but also adversely affect the quality by limiting choice. It is difficult to question the authority of the doctor, and there is no way of knowing how good or bad their opinion or intentions are. User reviews and information available on online appointment booking portals and on the internet in general talks a lot about the user experience, but not much about the end patient care outcome. To give you an example, if you go to a doctor and she's courteous to you, and she doesn't make you wait a lot, you're likely to give her a great review. That does not mean that three months down the line, you would be in a better position because of her treatment than if you would have gone to a lower reviewed, grumpier doctor. A better way to assess would be to measure and track objective criteria around long-term patient care outcomes compared across doctors and hospitals. For example, mortality rate among similar case cases in April of 2011, my mother started what was then the largest super speciality reference lab of the state of Madhya Pradesh. It had facilities ranging from routine biochemistry, advanced immunoassays and microbiology, to super specialized genetic and molecular testing. In Madhya Pradesh of 2011, even for a simple test like vitamin or cancer marker, the sample needed to be transported to a metro like Delhi or Mumbai. This local processing not only saved valuable time for the doctors to make treatment-related decisions, but also gave more accurate results because there was no deterioration of sample during transit. This was also the time I got admitted into the undergraduate program at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. I had three months between the inauguration of the lab and my joining the college. Inspired by the movie The Social Network, I desperately wanted to do something real in life. In the first year of operations, we were serving five to 10 outpatients a day with a capacity to process 5,000. We were getting specialized work from hospitals and government, but NADA from doctors. The problem was economic. Doctors expected a kickback, a cut on the earnings of the diagnostic center for each patient they referred, something which was morally unacceptable to us. Frustrated, we put in one last attempt, reducing the prices of all tests by up to 70% directly for the patients. Most doctors stopped accepting our reports, despite being the only lab in the state with both NABL accreditation and CAP proficiency for quality. Many honest doctors over time also started supporting the cause. But things really changed 
when patients started responding to the superior quality, lower turnaround times, and reduced prices. By the end of 2014, we were serving over 100,000 patients in Indore. At this time, we partnered with the Center for Urban Science and Engineering, IIT Bombay, to commission a study to measure the impact of our model on the lives of the people. In a country where only the rich are insured and 88% of all medical-related expenses were out of pocket, we went in with the hypothesis that reduced prices were helping lower-income households reduce their out-of-pocket expenses. The study was published in the 14th World Congress on Public Health. The results, however, were counterintuitive. Our average patient was educated, most being graduates or diploma holders. They had access to clean drinking water and sanitation facilities. These were the people who could, through their education, make informed decisions and confidently go against the advice of the doctor on choosing which brand of healthcare-related services would they use. The economic impact was significant. Patients on an average paid 179 rupees to us versus 903 in an average diagnostic center in the city. This was a saving of a whooping 81%, which was both because of lower test costs and fewer tests being prescribed. The next question that naturally came to us was how do we scale this up across India and possibly the developing world without having to invest capital everywhere? In 2015, I launched an online diagnostics aggregator where patients could compare and book diagnostic tests from NABL accredited labs around them. They also saved 20 to 50% on every booking and they could maintain their electronic health records with it. We chose NABL as the minimum criteria for quality because it was one, the most comprehensive check available in this country. Two, because ISO 15189 on which NABL is based is accepted in 130 countries. And three, because it's a government body, it's unbiased relative to other organizations which give accreditations. Over time, we realized that the real value lies not in improving the information asymmetry or in trying to create a comparison portal, but in improving three things. One, affordability. Can the care being provided of reasonably high quality be afforded by the patient? In an ideal world, we like the best and the most comprehensive care for everyone. Value life equally of rich and poor. Unfortunately, this is not that world. The poor, a rich person can afford regular health checkups, while most poor would not even get tested for diabetes in their lifetime. Even if patients are affording, most would err in the side of low while investing in healthcare. Two, accessibility. Is the care being provided accessible to me? Is it near where I live or work? Can I reach there by public or private transportation facilities available to me? Can the care being provided be provided to me at home? Now once we start thinking about the care to be provided at home, we also have to think about the cost and the operational aspects around it. The average cost, including salaries, rent, transportation, etc., for delivering medicines for most online startups in India at home versus delivering them through brick and mortar stores is between three and seven times higher. Then there are the operational issues. If a blood sample is drawn at home and is transported, it takes between four to 24 hours to reach the main processing lab. Even if cold chain is maintained, this sample is likely to deteriorate and the results are less accurate than they would have been if the sample was drawn at the main lab. Third, care outcomes. The ultimate differentiator in healthcare is the improvement in care outcomes. There is no one thing which can alone change the face of the healthcare ecosystem in the country. Digital is great, electronic health records and information availability have little or no